Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I do appreciate it. Hope your day is going super well. I'm in Luminar 4 today and I thought I would do a sample landscape workflow. And the reason is, is because I actually was working on this photo and I ended up using filters on all four of the different tabs. So you may have seen me uh, talk about the different tabs in some of my previous videos and how the filters are organized. That video in particular covers some of that. But I thought what I would do is share this workflow as a sample uh, or example, and that's because I do use filters on each of the four tabs. I thought it would give you a good walkthrough. So here is the, the base photo, and after some work in Luminar 4, I got it to that. And you know I love my color, or maybe you don't know if you're new here, but if you're not new here, you know I love my color. Um, so I wanted to amp up the colors. I did crop the photo, but I'll walk through all of that and show you what I did, and then um, we'll just jump into it. I do want to point out that we're still in beta, so some things may change, but um, I think we're pretty close to sticking uh, mostly like uh, the way it is now. So I thought this would be a helpful preview. Let me reset all these and we'll get started. Okay, first things first, I'm going to go to the crop tool, and that's you can get quick access to it right there with that icon. I did cho uh, choose a 16 by 9 crop, and what I wanted to do is kind of move this a little bit and just get that set like that. I still want a good bit of those reflections in the sand, uh, but I definitely wanted to just kind of crop it a little bit. So I think that looks good. I'm gonna say done. And I, I am gonna be consulting my notes so that I remember what I did. Um, but I, I basically what I found myself doing is starting on each one of these tabs in order, unless I'm doing a sky replacement, in which case I do that first. Uh, because all these other filters are gonna impact the sky as well. So if you change all the photo and then put in the new sky, I feel like it's better to put the new sky in and then have your base photo with the new sky and then do all your other edits. But something like this, clearly not replacing this sky. So I'm gonna start with light and let's see, I went a little bit cooler here, something like that and a little bit more on tint. Um, and then exposure, I actually brought that down a tad, something like, about like that. I did a bit of smart contrast. Let me see, yeah, something like that. And if you haven't seen my video on smart contrast, you may wanna check that out. It helps to explain kind of what the tool does. It's it's great, I think. Uh, and then highlights, I brought that down, um, oops, a uh, fair amount. So something like about like that. Uh, next I went to AI Enhance, and I did a little bit on both of these. The AI Accent is um, used to be known as Accent AI, but they renamed that with AI first because all the other AI tools have AI first. So they just wanted that to match. Uh, and I brought actually Sky Enhancer a little bit as well. And you can see already, we're making some progress. There's before and uh, current. Um, structure I didn't use, I did go to color and I gave it a little bit of vibrance here. So something like 15 or 16. Uh, actually, I think I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. Uh, and then I went straight into Landscape Enhancer, which encompasses three filters uh, or tools. Keep in mind this may change because we're in beta, but I wanted to use Golden Hour because I want to warm up those tones a little bit. So I went to about 25 there. And that's tab one. So fairly straightforward. It, it is called the Essentials tab for a reason. I think these are essential tools. And these are ones that just make sense to start with. So it's kind of where I'm starting. Uh, next, I went over here to Creative, and you can see there's a lot of filters here. I'm not really using a lot. I'm just going to use Mystical, which you may know uh, may know as Image Radiance from the previous version. But I'm going to go about 20 or so here, something like that, and I'm going to warm it up as well, uh, something about like that. So, oops, I closed that. Let me uh, turn that off. So there's the before and the after. So it just gives a, I just call it a romantic glow. It's it's called mystical now, but it, you know for me it's it's kind of a romantic glow kind of look. Uh, and while I'm on that theme, I'm gonna jump over to the portrait tab. And Orton Effect, which is often used on landscapes, is actually in the portrait tab because it's used there as well. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of Orton as well, just because I like that look. I, I often use what's now called Mystical, it used to be called Image Radiance. I often use that in combination with Orton and kind of hit them both. You can see the before and the after of Orton. Not a massive change, but it just gives it a little, I don't know what to call it besides romantic glow. I just kind of like it. And once again, you know, we've come a pretty good ways. There's the before. It was a beautiful sunset, by the way. This was on the Oregon coast. 
but uh, you know that single exposure just doesn't really show it. And I'm bringing back some of that color. Uh, but now I'm on to the last tab, which is Pro. Uh, and here I'm gonna start with adjustable gradient. And let me see what I did. Uh, okay, I took the highlights down in the top, something about like that, uh, something like that. And then in the bottom, I brought the exposure slightly up. And there we go. So again, not a massive change. And that's one of the things I like to point out is you can get a massive change in a photo at the end, even though you're doing small kind of incremental changes as you go. So, you know, they do add up as you're stacking these uh, filter adjustments or tool adjustments. Um, you, you will find over time that you're going to have a massively different photo. And I'll show you the, the massive difference here in a minute. So that's adjustable gradient. Next was color enhancer. You may find that you're in this filter a lot because it encompasses a number of different tools from the previous uh, version, brilliance and warmth, color contrast, split color warmth, and then in the drop down advanced section, you have color balance. As much as I love color balance, I'm not using it on this photo, but I am using brilliance and warmth. So I went about six on brilliance and about 14 on warmth. So again, trying to bring back some of that sunset warmth because I've, I've lost a little bit of that. There's a lot of blue in the photo, which I like, in fact, I love. Um, but I also wanna bring up the warmth because it is a sunset and I want it to look like a sunset. So having said that, split color warmth, I do about a 25 here and that, that helps quite a bit. So just in color enhancer so far, we've gone from that. You can see the, the orange warm tones are a little bit more muted to that and now they're really starting to pop a little bit. And we're gonna do one last thing and that's in split toning. And I'm gonna take the saturation on the highlights up about to 10 or 12. Uh, let's see, I'll go to 12. And again, not a big slider movement, but if you look at the before and the after, um, I think it does help and gives it a little bit of pop. And in fact, let me turn that off and turn off color enhancer. And you can see what these two filters have done to the color overall in the image, right? So there it is before, not nearly as warm or punchy, still kind of muted. Now warmer and then with split toning turned on as well. Uh, quite a bit warmer and I think it gives a good balance because if you look kind of at the left side of the photo over here You've got a lot more blue and then over here You got a lot more of the, the warmer tones and I think those two filters uh, or tools uh, Really help to emphasize that so let me show you the before Again, I can't show you the before on the crop unless I go back to the crop tool and we don't really need to do that But I did crop it to a 16 by 9 wanted to just tighten up that um, that composition a little bit and after there it is with a, a whole lot of color and yet still I don't I don't feel like it's a, like a clown vomity kind of oversaturated mess um, I think it's beautiful I, I like color so the thing is if, if it's too much for you you can of course tone that down a little bit but wanted to walk through that sample workflow just to show you kind of how I'm doing things currently again we're still in beta so some things may change but I wanted to walk through kind of how I'm doing things and then also show you how I'm using different filters uh, on all four tabs, even the portrait tab. It was Orton effect on the portrait tab, but regardless, even on a landscape, I'm using um, you know, uh, filters or tools from each of the four tabs. Just thought it might be helpful to give you some ideas. So you're gonna have Luminar in your hands really soon. I'm excited for you to try it out and that sort of thing. So please um, follow along, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Leave me a comment uh, down below what you think about it and be sure to like and share and I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care and adios.